Fearscape Media Network, exploring the unknown, one podcast at a time. From Fearscape Media, Peer Beyond the Veil is coming back for a new season this March. We're talking government-sponsored mind control, walking on the edge with DMT, wild occultism and deep parapsychology, along with our signature blend of extraterrestrialism, supernaturalism and cryptid chasing. Bringing you a brand new roster of fascinating guests, each with their own stories and theories on the wild and the wonderful. Peer Beyond the Veil. Find us wherever there's darkness. The SCP multiverse is under constant assault, and destruction can come at any moment. Therefore, having just one database is a folly the Foundation can no longer accept. Join Dr. Kevin Milgram and SCP-073, Kane, as they create an oral history of the SCP Foundation in Memories of Kane, an SCP story, hosted by Daniel Doremus. For should the Foundation fall, the unkillable first murderer of man will live on. New episodes drop every second Wednesday of the month on the Fearscape Media Network. Visit fearscapemedia.com for more information. Coming to you from nowhere, a suburb of parts unknown, your ghoulish hosts for an evening of terror, Stephen Gearhart and Lance Wayne, the Misters of the Dark. <laughs> Dear friends, welcome to another terrifying episode of Mysteries of Time, the greatest horror podcast in the history of horror podcasting. As always, we're beaming directly to you from nowhere, a suburb of parts unknown. I'm your co-mister, the man with no name, Lance Wayne. And <laughs> I'm your co-mister, I'm an I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> I'm your head. Mr. Lord Stefan Gearhart Lynch, who the hell is this thing? Oh, I'm the nine. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so uh, sorry. Just I'm pipe so down. Happy. Pipe down, uh, Lance. Well, his name is Menard, Stefan. <laughs> Like you were here for the introduction where he said his I name. know what his name is! I know it's Menard! I have ears! I want to know what in Godzilla's name he is doing here when we have guests coming! Oh, oh I'm so sorry! I didn't know you were having guests! I'm sorry! I sorry. said shut up! <laughs> shut up! <laughs> Lance, I want an answer now. Well, Stefan, I'm not so sure how it happened myself. Mm-hmm. I was stalking, lurking about the village. Like when, you're supposed to. Yeah, when I just sort of came upon him. I was just about to stick my dagger deep within his guts, and I noticed he seemed completely unfazed. Unfazed, hmm. Yeah. After that, he just sort of started mumbling and following me about, and I... I haven't been able to get rid of them since. Oh, well, this is just great. Why? What's wrong? You stumbled upon the village idiot, you boob. You have a Well, what should we do with them, Stefan? What should we do with them, Stefan? <laughs> Lance, did it ever occur to you that you should, oh, I don't know, remember that we're serial killers and kill him? <gasps> I couldn't do that! Besides, I don't even think he knows where he is half the time. I'm so sorry if I've ruined the show. I'm so sorry. Here, let me, let, let, let me do the talk.
taco cheese. Oh, oh, no. Spread the cheese. Oh, put that cheese. away. Oh, okay, okay I gotta think fast. I gotta think fast. Uh, uh, hey, <laughs> hey, Menard. Hey, hey. So I'm just gonna sit you in this corner for oh. now, and whatever you do, don't say a word to anyone, okay? Oh, oh, oh I'm good at not talking. Yeah. Not only am I king of the taco team, uh -huh. but, but I'm the quiet game champion. I'm, uh -huh. I'm so That's sorry. So great. I'm now so shut so up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, now, dear friends, please welcome Ben and Stacy Dixon. I'm so sorry. About this. Yay! Thank you, Ben and Stacy Dixon. Man, we are so pumped to have you guys here at the dilapidated mansion. Excuse the mess. That's Lance. Uh, no, it's not. It's no, it's it's Lance, the man with no it's name. Stephen. Lance Wayne. It's Stefan. It's Lance. It's Lord. It's the Lord. You, <laughs> you become a Lord, and suddenly you don't have to do shit around the house. Well, here's the thing, guys. We, you know, we were trying to figure out if we, you know, who we would get for a guest this week to come over to the house, and Lance was like, "We need some tattoo artists," and I'm like, "No, no, we need some people that run a haunted." house he's like nah we need some people that do movies and acting and directing and i was like nah and then he's like well you know we need people that do conventions and stuff and we're like no nah. hey wait a minute <laughs> we know some people that do everything the power couple <laughs> ben and stacy dixon and yes. so yeah you guys are the powerhouse how do you feel about being just recently within the last like 12 seconds recently named the power couple by the uh, the the boys here mm. oh, thank you yeah <laughs> thank you thank you I very did, much I, yeah i was just i was <laughs> well I, I was i was ask i was saying to stefan a little bit ago i was like okay these people run a film company they run a convention they run you know tattoos they run their own you know theater they when do you all have time to eat sleep <laughs> Make love. When? 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 We do the best that we can. <laughs> we I hear you. <laughs> With our kids, you We're got, just you know. working on different functions constantly. You know, bouncing from the movies to tattooing mm -hmm. to haunt. Like tomorrow's yeah. a haunt day, so got to go in and work on the haunt. Got to get it ready for the convention. Got to start prepping for this year's season. And yeah. And Friday's movies, and then Saturday's tattooing and yeah. movies. Right. So we're just yeah, running, geez. you know, full force. And then yeah. Sunday, it's tattooing and movies. Yeah. And then Monday, I'm tattooing. He's off. Then I get Tuesday and Wednesday off. Woohoo, I get well, Tuesday. nice. <laughs> <laughs> we only get one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, they, they always say, like, it's either hit or miss when you work with your spouse, right? Like it's either hit or miss. And from just the people I know that we know together, um, everyone just says that you guys are that one that's hit. Like it, it works really, really well to see you guys work together um, to accomplish everything you do. And in fact, just looking at you two, I mean, it looks like something that really makes you guys stronger. I, yeah. Well, thank you. I, I actually learned to listen to <laughs> what's that? And, uh, you no. know, it's yeah. <laughs> hogwash. <laughs> so apparently, you haven't learned to bullshit yet. Ben. <laughs> yeah. Well, <I'm> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's no poker face bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but so, yeah, it, it's, it, it, it's, 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 it's uh, the balancing act you know? oh i bet yeah i mean it's just crazy how much i mean going Go back uh, uh you know going back like when what was first when did this all start um we met on we, we was working on a second film for bloody moon films we had done mm -hmm. scarecrow uh which was you know dark harvest three which mm -hmm. Had nothing to do with one or two, but that was what Lionsgate kind of. <laughs> hey, so it's we were, fun. Yeah. yeah, we were working on the second film, and you know we needed another makeup artist, and somebody had referred me to Stacy, and that's you know, little did I know how how much all that was going to change everything, and you know, in both our lives, and. You know, that's that's actually how we met was um, 
you know, I'd gotten her number from a guy that we knew mutually. And, um, you know, so she came and we met and. Mm. <laughs> it's just like I, I kind of regressed a lot of that. I'm just happy you to really be. You really want me to tell that? Yeah, well, I'm good. I don't know. I don't think. <laughs> oh, don't get embarrassed. Yeah. Well but, but yeah, that's that's literally how we met, and we worked together on on uh, it was Wolfsbane at mm-hmm. the time. And mm-hmm. That's that's how we met. That's so cool, man. Well, let yeah. me just list off a couple of these things for people that don't know who you are. We've got Lone Wolf Body Art. Okay. We've got Nashville Full Moon Tattoo and Horror Festival. We've got Slaughterhouse, Full Moon Cineplex, Bloody Moon Films, plus the films. We got Dark Harvest 3, The Totem, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, you guys are amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just the stuff that we've seen you guys in that you've produced and done, we love um just like i said everyone that uh keith was not the first person to um to recommend me to you guys and and you guys definitely have if you don't know this a very positive reputation uh in in the community at large which of course your community gathers a number of different communities um all at once so very very cool very very much i mean we're very you know appreciative of that thank you yeah so so now uh, i so i see all these different things i see that you guys met how you met but it's like did some of these um things that were similar come together just learning together or were they already there like for example the tattoo stuff lone wolf body art it's like were you both already heavily into that or did one get into it because of the other uh stuff like that yeah, I um, I was I actually thought about becoming a tattoo artist because I've always been an artist, um, but it wasn't something that I did before I met Ben. Uh, that was something he had already turned me out on his own. I was a special effects makeup artist, and I went to Tom Savini School, and that's how. Oh, you know, cool. yeah, had some friends go there. Excellent. So yeah, it's a great school, mm-hmm. and Tom's a great guy too. So. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of like, he, he got the whole tattoo, he was into that. So just being an artist already, just kind of melded into all that. I was already into the whole film industry and things of that nature. And so was he, so it just kind of all worked together. Um, like I worked at Slaughterhouse years ago. Um, and now, you know, we own Slaughterhouse. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> That's the dream, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think both of us, at, you know, in our younger years, I mean, we both had this admiration about, you know, a haunted house and how cool would it be to, oh, yeah. you know, have one. You, you know. say that now, buddy. You oh, come to I, I, for a weekend, you will say that no more. Oh, no. I, <laughs> I'm looking at it from the potential millionaire that I'll be someday where I can just go do this stuff, guys. <laughs> yeah. I dream about that every day. Millionaire, that's the wrong career choice. <laughs> <laughs> I, my philanthropy is just haunted houses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just, you know, a lot. It's a lot, there's, of, work. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, doing um, a lot of personalities for sure oh yeah and uh you know a solid two months of having no voice i i've, I've worked i've worked haunts before i've got friends that work them i know <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. it's really interesting though how you know it all did kind of come together i mean you know with with lone wolf it started in 93 and um you know it's funny because the slaughterhouse was originally opened in 1986. wow, oh, wow. So it's the longest running haunt, uh, and, and Stacy and I are the, the third owners of, of the Slaughterhouse, and, and we acquired it in 2014, but like she was saying, she worked at the Slaughterhouse way before she and I even had met. That's how it all came about, was getting the call, like, or just kind of getting, finding out, and then getting into it for somebody else and then getting the call going, Hey, look, you know, make an offer. It's like, yeah. it's not something I thought about or he thought about. <laughs> it just kind of fell on the lap and it happened. Yeah. We built a ha- we built a haunt in six weeks. Yeah. Six nice. weeks. Oh my gosh. You see, you guys we are hitting, 
You guys are hitting Hallmark 35 film. years now this year too, right? Yeah. 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 So, you know, we had to move it in five uh, 52 foot tractor trailers, load it up and move it to this building. And we bought this old, um, it was the Courtyard Cinema movie theater. It was a Regal Cinema that, that mm -hmm. ran from 88 to 2001 and then went dormant. They closed it and it sat empty for 13 years. So till 2014. And that's when we got the call. Um, and, and it was kind of, it was one of these weird things too, because we were really, we were in this whole pre-production for the totem and we we're having trouble getting, you know, money and financing to, mm -hmm. to make that film. And all of a sudden, the, the writer of the book uh, and his agent, they pulled the rights, you know, on our, on our deal, trying to work it out. And so we were just kind of like, what are we going to do now? And then all of a sudden, this, the slaughterhouse kind of fell in our lap. And <laughs> it, it just really, you know, things kind of happen. You know, in hindsight, you look back and you're like, you know, it was a really devastating time losing that film, but, in, you know. Oh, whatever. The whole thing was devastating. The whole year, we lost money. <laughs> we, oh my we, God. we bought a hunt and put it together in six weeks. Nobody knew where the fuck we were at. <laughs> just, uh, is, this, is this censored? Yeah. No, no, no. No. Okay. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, 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 I mean, we were both like, what are we doing? I mean, you know, we were trying to work a deal to buy this building and get this haunt and just, I mean, it was almost to a point where it could have really gone <laughs> the, yeah. the wrong way. Yeah. Well, and luckily it all has worked out. Well, definitely. Yeah, it seems like it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, Jeez, man, I can't imagine that. Uh, you know, and yeah, I love that already you're able to look back and say, yeah, this was a crazy time, but who where you are now. And, and you know, you'll, you, you won't make, you know, mistakes like that, uh, you know, that you've had in the past and things like that. You know, what to yeah, you, you learn. I mean, it's, you know, really? Yeah. Really? <laughs> For the most part. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. This yeah, one. She, she slaps the truth right in. Some of us have really big hearts and we keep letting people do same things. Okay. That, that's a choice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got you on this one. <laughs> so, uh, so then, what about the um, the Cineplex? How did you get in? How did you get that? Did that one just fall on your damn lap too? <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. I, you know, with with having the movie theater, I mean, you know, she. You want to tell the story about you going to Chicago? I mean, that that was. Are you talking about the movie theater, just or just? How the the whole of, complex. You, well, no, the movie theater itself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, the concept was going about the dinner and the movie thing, and I hadn't really seen anything. Ugh. Hold on, give me a second. All right, so I haven't really seen anything like that until I went to Chicago. And when mm -hmm. we, my best friend from Savini School, she lives in Chicago, so I would go up there like once a year and we'd go to this place called Hollywood Boulevard. And there was there's two locations up there. Mm -hmm. And it was so cool because the place was so unique. Each theater was decked out with tables and, you know, drapery and ornate, you know, structures. And each one was themed. And it was just beautiful. Yep. Like, and so I was like, man, if we did something like that, that would definitely be the way to go. I mean, yeah. they brought in big names like Burt Reynolds and everything. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're like a huge theater company. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. been to the yeah. ones in Chicago. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. So, yeah. but that's we kind of like took that and brought it into the theater yeah. and gave it a twist, you know, just because it's it is a singular theater that's being used for as a movie theater. Yeah, because right? like yeah. The, the theater itself has eight theaters. The Haunt is now currently in six of the theaters. The tattoo studio is in one, and then the, and then the movie uh, theater is in one. So I love it. Um, I love yeah, it. Man. We built, yeah, we built these platforms, you know, because it still had all the old slanted floors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. So we built the platforms, and and you know, she's like, we got to do these tables, and 
that way we could do the dinner. So the back half of the theater is is for the dining, and then you got regular seats up front, and we put couches in down there too. And you know, people, it's a really relaxed atmosphere, and we've got a lot of great regulars that come. Yeah, I love it. I'm looking at pictures of it right now. It very yeah. much reminds me of Second City's main stage theater in Chicago. Um, I just love the design of it. It's done very, very well. Um, she she I, did that red and black. That was that was her. I mean, she's. Don't ask me about you know <laughs> how I've made it thirty years in tattoo. <laughs> you know, but but she's got the design. I mean, yeah. she, she definitely has the taste. Well, I absolutely. Well, well uh, back well you know back in the day, going to the the movie theater used to be theater i'm sorry my southern's starting to come out but uh, <laughs> uh going to the movies was like a really big deal and they were all you know just i mean like you know i remember hearing about some theaters that had you know stars up in the yeah. the uh, ceiling like the and things and yeah yeah and you know and now they're all kind of they're almost like big box stores yeah they just yeah. they're all just kind of they all just got this blandness to them and yeah. things like that and that's why yeah that's why i like people I like you guys doing change. something different yeah i think it's going to change a lot for the, you know a lot of these theaters i think people are going to start independently probably open their own theaters I, up <laughs> that'd be I was gonna say so moving out here there's some different so we have of course alamo draft houses out here which is really neat for me because i always just heard about them yeah um, i know I, yeah i actually went recently saw, yeah i went and saw superman the motion picture there uh couple months back with my brother that was cool well they also have these ones here called roadhouse cinemas too and they have food and drinks and stuff like that and of course it's all push button to bring you food and stuff like that but the cool thing is is they have these smaller theaters they probably seat 10 people max mm -hmm. and they're still recliners all the whole nine yards but they do like these cheap five dollar pictures like i took my nephew to go see ghostbusters and uh, because it was COVID, they were half capacity. So it was just us two in there. We had the whole theater for 10 bucks, you know, to go see Ghostbusters. So we got popcorn, all kinds of stuff. But it was just a little small. I mean, probably I would say it screens 100 inch, you know, like it wasn't huge or anything. But I, we're, and now I'm starting to see because of COVID some more things like that, because they can rent those out to small families now, right. uh, as opposed right. to trying yeah. to rent out a 100 seat theater. They can rent out this 10 seat theater to a family, you yeah. know, for, you know, enough to get by. So it's kind of cool. And I just, I just think it's interesting. I love that you guys have just all my favorite things, food and movies uh, in one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, do you guys do any live performances or anything in there too? Or like Rocky we Horror? Comedy act for a little bit. We've done Rocky Horror several times. Oh, cool. We Is haven't that, done uh, any bands yet. We've talked about maybe, you know, in the future, maybe doing some bands, but bands. Yeah, I do improv. So like uh, we both do, I'm like, oh, that'd be a good spot. But also, you know, shadow casts are becoming hot again too, for all sorts of shows. Chicago has like a shadow cast for Ghostbusters. They have a shadow cast for Groundhog's Day. They got a shadow cast, I think somewhere, maybe in Texas for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like that's kind of becoming a new thing is shadow. Cause like, I don't know why it took so long but with Rocky Horror doing it for people to be like, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> See, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think it works with those films. Oh, it maybe, does. Maybe maybe Texas thing. Chainsaw Massacre because people still are creating these call and response things, even to these new films and stuff. And the people that are running these events are helping kind of create those calls and spots. And so, because uh, I have a buddy that does it in Chicago, he does the Ghostbusters one, and he said that you know the first couple you know weeks. Him and his buddies sit in the audience and create these call and responses, and then it be, kind of becomes a thing, um, as well as just the naturally improvised ones by the audience, and they just kind of catch on, and it's kind of fun. I think, I think you know the movie That's industry cool. has changed so much, yeah. you know, this past year, everything going to streaming that yeah, a lot of these theaters are really having to kind of become, you know, a little more creative as yeah. to yeah, what gimmicky, yeah. A gimmick, you know. Yeah, I mean, let's, to it's bring, time to bring the tingler back. Let's get the, <laughs> yeah, the tingler, the buzzing yeah. in the seats. You never know earthquake. who's gonna scream. <laughs> <laughs> earthquake, yeah, earthquake. Yeah. I wish, man. I would love to have been during those gimmicky times of the sixties oh, yeah, and seventies. Yeah. I'd have loved it, man. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> but now you got to sign waivers. Like you can't just do yeah. gimmicks anymore. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> oh, that came. There's a thing right there. I mean, you guys got this complex full of all sorts of things that need waivers, right? How's, how's that yeah. fun or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. The tattoo, I mean, we've done that for years, you know, but I mean, the haunt. You don't have to sign no, a waiver because no, it's, right. we just list it, it's posted. So as long as there's signage everywhere, yeah. You know, that's your release. Um, yeah, your standard not, haunt, not, you know, not yeah. the touchy, touchy. Not the extreme touch. ones. Yeah. 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 No, it's Which, not the extreme. <laughs> yeah, th those uh, those extreme ones, I, I just think they're in bad taste. Yeah, I don't. We're not even haunted it. houses. They're no, not no, no. Chamber. It's just torturing people. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's all it is, is people getting off on torturing people. And I'm like, that's dumb. Yeah. Well, I, I thought COVID, especially as far as uh, touch, I thought COVID would be like the death knell for those where they say like, oh, the actors yeah. can touch you and stuff. Exactly. Yeah, but, uh... yeah, I was living on the edge for sure. Yeah. We didn't know, like, just we kept going and kept going and pushing to get things done. And, you know, several Several people have been out working all summer long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Commercials. Well, you can't use that commercial because a mask mandate wasn't in place. So now we can't yeah. use that commercial because it has no mask mandate. No. Oh, oh man. man. Think about that. Yeah. 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 Oh. You don't know whether or not, I mean, you know, going into the haunt season, she did not, she was like, okay, we're going to move forward. But, you know, this at any minute could be like, it's not going to happen. I mean, yeah. Yeah, but you can't you can't you know just sit around and not do something either. I mean, yeah. so we were working, trying to you know she was back there busting ass to get it get it ready to have a season if we if we were allowed and you know kind of the same thing with the, with the festival. It's just you know we learned three about three or four weeks ago that the health department you know said okay you could you could have this. So, it's just weird times with everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think in Louisville, I think only one haunt opened last year, right? And that was that American Horror Complex, right? No, there were a few. Uh, there Over were. There? A few, yeah, because because the, they did the Danger Run and things like that. Oh so. yeah, 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 yeah. I can't yeah. believe they let that happen with your governor. Waterboy. Anyway, uh, well, they had to do all sorts of different things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. not do that. I would be in so much trouble. <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> <laughs> But no, because Lance and I both got invited to go to the opening with press passes to go to American Horrorplex because um, they were trying something new since with COVID and stuff like that. But that's when I got COVID, so I couldn't go. But Lance went and I, what you described to me was pretty interesting the way they did it. It was. Yeah. I mean, it, it was I, honestly, I mean, outside of the outside of the mask and, you know, people just not like coming up on you or anything. It was pretty much the same. It was really well done, and I mean, they were wiping down things. You know, it wasn't a free for all or anything. So, I mean, it it could be done. And they definitely did it a little more like a storyline, right? Yeah, and yeah. Narrated yeah. things to kind of get you. Yeah, through, but... almost like a performance art or something. Yeah, which for me as an actor, I'm like, I like. Yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> yeah, we definitely just kind of stayed on the same level with the. Um... The characters you know mm -hmm. in the beginning and then just your regular movie horror people like jason freddie and all that yeah doing their thing and so you know i mean it just we kind of kept it the same but still you know it that's kind of how slaughterhouse is yeah but i'll tell you what like the year before covid there was like 78 people on the roster and then for the covid season there was 38 so drop that many people. It still works, but you didn't yeah. know. You didn't know what's going to happen, and you don't want to overwhelm with too many actors. Right. Yeah. Right. And all. Yeah. And but there was a hundred percent more drama. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah. Can't I, I can't hide Forty she, less people. Yeah. She runs that in the back with all, and it's you know, divas, divas. divas. He could. He can't, can't take that personality you know yeah, no, no. <laughs> i don't see how i've been with steph in so long <laughs> yeah it's, it's like you're gonna be what you know what get get in your square what get back here what you know, uh, put that down you know it's i, I would freak out you know once so i stay up front working with uh, with the movies and you know the concessions and everything and she she does she runs all her little yeah when hot season, I click out of the movies and go in the back. He, he, yeah, it's 
So we have to have it's crazy. this, this it's crazy. whole thing, that, you know, where it is. It's like, you know, where you were talking earlier, I mean, how we make all of this stuff work. And, you know, it, it is. It's a balancing act, you know. Yeah. And she takes care of this, and I'll take care of this, and then we come together and take care of this other. And it's... um it's, it's, it's something else, I tell you. Well, yeah. kudos. I mean, kudos to you guys for surviving this. Yeah, for persevering, definitely. And yeah. still, like, being able to still do the things that you love, you know, because some people didn't figure it out right, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's a testament to you both, like, to show how you persevered through this and, uh, you know, are going to come out stronger for it, especially when all this is done, you know, because you're there are certain to- things, too, that I think we learned through oh, the code sure. that, oh yeah that that is going to work like time ticketing like we we implemented that with with the haunt this past season and you know having these ticket blocks and and people it, it cut the wait time like way oh, down yeah. I, oh you know, wow yeah you know like we were having three four hour waits and you know before but you know then you, you everything slotted slotted yeah. times and people yeah. just show up go in you know 15 20 minute waits and you know it, it just made things probably help so parking and all kinds of stuff out I yeah, yeah parking didn't get overwhelmed i mean yeah that, w- that was one interesting thing about you know the whole covid with you know uh how the Halloween the hey lady <laughs> <laughs> ignore him sound like but, jerry uh, lewis over there spit it out brother but uh <laughs> anyway he uh but uh it was, it was you, you saw people getting a lot more. Yeah, they had to. That that's what separated the men from the boys. <laughs> I'm it, like, it, I'm it, up. <laughs> I can't. I can't quit laughing now. Oh my god, hilarious. Go at Stefan. At Stefan. God damn it, Stefan. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. But uh, uh, but you know, you, you saw people having to get a lot more creative. Yeah, you know, yeah. You, I, I mean, I I haven't really heard about anybody that's went through one, but you had the drive the drive through haunts this year, yeah. Yeah. yeah, which was yeah. I mean, they figured something out that worked. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so we're because of the limited number of people that we can put through the festival, we in the health department we came up with time ticket blocks for that. So we're going to do three hour and some limited six hour blocks. So mm. like say one to four, four to seven, seven to 10, because you know, there's only X amount of people that can be in the building at a time. So that way each time block, once that's done, then that group leaves and then a whole nother group, you know, comes in. Right. And, yeah. And then you again, guys got to factor in all the vendors and stuff too, right? So well, that exactly. Kinda- there's a, yeah. Yeah, about 200 people that work the show all together. So I'm kind of wondering though, because the health department said 500 people at a time, but now this past week or the week before, was it this week? It was this yeah, week, wasn't this it? Week, yeah. They upped to live events to a thousand people in Tennessee. Yeah. So hmm. maybe, you know. Another couple of weeks. Yeah, that's what, with more you and know, more people getting vaccinated, you're going to yeah. see it change more and more and more. So, yeah. Definitely. I mean, it's just, um, you know, just trying to figure out what what does work, and 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 again, I mean, you know, safety, trying to keep keep things clean, and but you know, it's just I think people are ready to get out and oh and, god, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, and and, and yeah, live again. And, you know. I mean, yeah. I have my not, liver can't take it anymore. <laughs> I have hike. I have done so much hiking in nature, and I'm thankful for it. But good God, I could just use the mall. That'd be nice. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. Like, just for a day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I would rather start doing my drinking in public now. Yeah, <laughs> I do this. I miss <laughs> karaoke. I miss karaoke. I do this. Me too. Oh my god, <laughs> so much. So yeah. Oh, and I miss. Karaoke. Yeah. I miss being on stage, I man. I haven't performed. Mm-hmm. In a year. Oh God. Like, yeah. Uh, acting or or improv, like it's I'm itching. I've done a couple Zoom things, and we, you know, but it's just I can't wait to get back on that stage and, and concerts and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Concerts yeah. so much. So much because yeah, I was mad. Cool we had tickets to go people. see um, Ozzy Osbourne and Megadeth, and that's right when Ozzy got sick. 
And so they canceled our tickets. They're like, oh, don't worry. We'll be back next year, of course. And then Dave Mustaine got sick. And we were like, we're never going to see these people. Ozzy's going to be dead by the time COVID's over. (laughs) And Dave Mustaine's going to be at church. We're never going to make it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Dave. <laughs> um, but I did also want to talk about uh, Bloody Moon Films. Um, you know, you guys have done a lot of stuff. Of course, my fave is Old Habits Die Hard because Kane Hodder, how the hell did you? Yeah. Get oh, my, yeah. One of our heroes. One of our heroes. And I'm sure for yeah. you too, and not to play fanboy, but what was that like? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how tall is he? <laughs> <laughs> it was it was fun and you know we had to ride in a park you know stacy was you know they brother and sister with kane and and i'm like okay i've got to ride in this part that i get to make out with my wife <laughs> and the kid with kane Hunter. okay so <sighs> set up this table and he actually got to choke slam me through the table and nice uh, was, um you know and it was like a couple of weeks later i actually had to go in the hospital and have a kidney removed so oh geez like, thanks uh, kane hotter uh, yeah <laughs> oh kane. man <laughs> but uh it was great um in fact we you know last year we put together a film called death breed and it's it's unreleased and what we did is we took the three films um shutter uh, Wolf's Bane and Old Habits. And we came back in, we shot a wraparound story, um, kind of like a, you know, creep show, Tales from the Crypt kind of thing. Yeah. And we edited down those three films to about 35, 40 minutes each. So Death Breed is the newest film that we're about to start pushing. And, you know, it, it's kind of like the best of those other three films all together in these, you know, shortened stories and into one film. And it's, um, it actually turned out. Oh, it's really cute. Yeah, really amazing. Very, that's very cool. cute. cute. Very super, cute. Very, very cute. Super cute. That's, that's one thing I like my horror to be, it's cute. That's a requirement. <laughs> oh. That's great. It's, it's very cute. <laughs> Sounds adorable. Look at the way the flesh on the neck rips and looks like a rose. It's fast. Yeah, oh. <laughs> so much red. So much red. <laughs> and we're shooting a music video Saturday. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that's for, one thing I read is you all do music videos. For the band Every Mother's Nightmare. Do you remember those guys from the 90s? They, uh, they st- st- sounds familiar. Yeah, and uh, one of their big hits, The Love Can Make You Blind. And But yeah, we're <laughs> shooting, they got a new album and we're shooting a video for cool. them um, Saturday. And, <laughs> and, and where are we shooting it at? Oh, cool! That is cool. so convenient. Yeah, <laughs> right. How did you get that book? Need to have a whole set for like, <laughs> like all this square footage of sets just all yeah, around you, just ready to, to ready work to walk in. in. And we're like, Stacy, can we shoot no. in the hall? <laughs> no. Yeah. So it, the song is called "Sin Sin in My Heart," and it's kind of got like this voodoo kind of thing and. Stacy is reprising her role as Sabrina Wolf Ooh. in the Ooh. video, and uh, it's yeah. So be on the lookout for that. For oh, sure. oh, definitely, oh, we'll yeah. definitely share the hell out of it too for you guys. Um, it, you know, it reminds me of that joke here out here because there's the big you know meteor crater out here, and they're like, how convenient that this meteor landed right next to the meteor crater gift shop. Like, I'm so, <laughs> <laughs> or like, man, crazy that Lou Gehrig got Lou Gehrig's disease. <laughs> <laughs> but who's buried in LeGrant's tomb? Yeah, <laughs> I could do that shit all day. <laughs> and, you know, we learned something interesting about the building that, you know, Full Moon Cineplex, all that the haunts at. There was paranormal stuff that was happening there since the day we, we moved in. Oh, I bet. But we just found out from the owner of the shopping center. Who bought the land. Who bought the land, who was previously part of Andrew Jackson's farm. 
Hmm. What it what it what was on the land before they built the theater and the shopping center? Three family cemeteries. Oh my god. Any oh. guys, this stuff is crazy in there. <laughs> oh, like, wow. I bet. Oh, gosh. And he it's- says, Well, we moved the bodies. We moved the, the cemetery. And well, I'm thinking, oh, okay, did you just move the headstone? Mm-hmm. <laughs> We've all seen polar guys. Yeah, yeah, guys. yeah, yeah. Why? Why? <laughs> That's a, my neighborhood where I grew up. I grew up in Toledo, Ohio originally, and um, I lived on the outskirts of downtown. And where we were was the original Toledo Cemetery, but as the city expanded, they moved <laughs> the cemetery. Yeah. Well, my brother had a metal detector when he was a kid. We would find coffin handles and just different things mm. um, wow. from that, uh, as well as supposedly a Native American burial ground. and and the like, you know, um, but it's interesting because Louisville, there's a mandate in, in the entire county, Jefferson County, you can't move any of those. So like in the middle of a parking lot will be this yeah. like five headstone cemetery yeah. oh, wow. from some yeah. family that had a farm back in the day. And you're just parking there to go to the movies because it's at the mall. They're scattered all over Louisville, especially there's- though in like St. Matthew's area and stuff like that. Yeah. There's just these, my wife, like behind her work where she used to work, cemetery of like 10 headstones. She's got a little brick wall yeah. around it. Like, There's <laughs> one right out in front of a uh, Freedom Hall. Yeah. They're just, yeah, they're, you're not allowed to move them. Like that is, I don't know how long that's been in place. That but stuff in our area, like in her, yeah, it's like small, in the uh, Hickory <laughs> area. So you'll just run across like our old house, right across the street was this family cemetery in somebody's yard. Yeah. <laughs> just random just plot you know yeah. Yeah. I, wonder if that, I wonder if that makes the value any different <laughs> on the house or anything yeah, right? I would say so but, uh, well, yeah. I, maybe because I'll tell you what uh, I, I host Fearscape Paranormal Podcast as well and we had this woman that owns the Boyd House in Indiana or I mean excuse me in Minnesota and we were asking her how did you buy a haunted house like it's a legit haunted house right um mm-hmm. and i was like how did you buy a haunted house she goes well i went on zillow and things like that and there were certain things i was looking for i was like how do you look for a haunted house and <laughs> but she did she talked about it like built in the victorian times um you know was there a cemetery in close proximity just certain things like that that she was able to kind of flag to look for and then she would quickly do a history on the house to oh, kind yeah. of see you know different things like that and she found one that had a history of paranormal activity from the families that lived there. It's 200 miles from where she lives. So, I mean, she was really looking. It's, it's crazy. Oh, wow. I'm looking and, it up. Yeah, she, she turned into like a bed and breakfast? Or yeah, or it's, kind of, oh, it's not necessarily a bed and breakfast, but they, de- they do the overnights. Like you can yeah. book for either a night or for the whole weekend. And she has said, because of that, because it's small groups, she hasn't had to change anything for COVID. So they've done really well because people are looking for things oh, yeah, to get out and do. Yeah. Well, well, me and my friends and my family can get together and go to this this scary haunted house that has all this creepy shit happening. So it worked great. So yeah, that's something you guys awesome. you guys can have overnights there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put some cots. <laughs> Well, I have a paranormal group too, so um, we we we've talked about staying the night in there, you know, one night. And I'm like, dude, Oops. I don't know. Like, I like to go to sleep and like uh, in my head. <laughs> well, 40s now, maybe like 10 years ago, this might have worked. <laughs> but, uh, well, they're there, personal to you. Right? There. <laughs> there's we've seen so much stuff. Yeah, there's a lot. Oh, I can only imagine. And so, how long you've been in? Um, so you're in a paranormal group as well. Yes. Then what's that called? Uh, well, we're coming up with a name. <laughs> I know I've never heard of it. Uh, parapsychology. So um, I think that's kind of what we're going with. But I was with the Tennessee Ghost Hunters for several years, I'm and then with them, yeah. had our you know, I had our child, Phoenix, which is now 13. And I kind of stopped and then mm-hmm. started another one. So it was Black, ca- black, black Cat, cat Paranormal. paranormal. Yeah. Oh, it was cool. all cool girls. One. All girls, yeah. But now, I've, cool I, like, now it's like, we got one guy. He's like Scooby-Doo. 
<laughs> Mr. Ink, problem solved. I know, I know, like, Keith Age, I know he loves to go to these cons and stuff and get people to no. ghost hunt, and he finds, you know, like, I don't know if you know Santiago Cirillo or not, but, like, getting no. him, like, getting him and finding out, oh, shit, he's got some psychic gifts, let's get him going, and then he finds all these, like, random actors, and he's always like, hey, Stefan. So I don't know if you know this, but Michael Berryman's also into UFOs. <laughs> so like, yeah, yeah, big, big, yeah. So he'll yeah. like get you like he, he's always telling me he's like uh, he'll hit me up because I have both these shows and he'll say which show do you want it for? I'm like do they do both. He's like yeah. Would I send them if they weren't into both? <laughs> yeah, he's he's definitely our hookup. Yeah, yeah. he's the man. He's great, man. I've never yeah. even met him. <laughs> you yeah you have not because of covid you have not but he is a good good friend yes, good yes. mentor of mine yeah, you, you you first met him years ago yeah you know. i did his show a few times yeah you know, he's a table and set up and everything well randomly uh i know this has nothing to do with anything but keith but i was randomly at the half price books that's out here in phoenix arizona and i found his damn book sitting there in the paranormal (laughs) section hasn't been published for like 10 years and it was like he told me there was only 10,000 put out there and I find one in Phoenix Arizona and I said hey I don't need you to sign it it's already signed but to some guy named Thomas so (laughs) (laughs) I said I think he might be dead Keith I'm not sure yeah that are just really angry (laughs) right (laughs) my wife sold my Keith (laughs) Oh, shit, man. Uh, Well, speaking of cons, the big thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about was indeed the Nashville Full Moon Tattoo and Horror Festival. I know you guys got it coming up in April, so let's definitely spend some time talking about that because I know this is kind of like a a big to do, especially with uh, last year happening. So let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, cool. So, yes, April 2nd through the 4th, the Full Moon Tattoo and Horror Festival. Yeah, Tennessee. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> Sorry, I was gonna cut a wrestling promo there. Oh man! <laughs> but yeah, oh, that's that's it. And it was the uh, uh, Marriott Hotel. Um, it's now renamed. It was bought. It's called the Sinesta Nashville Airport. All right. So. Um, you know, that just happened literally last week, too. So, <laughs> all this, you know, like, oh, yeah, by the way, the Marriott is not going to be the Marriott. You got to, like, cross out on all the posts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. That's been fun. So, you're mixing <laughs> tattoos and horror. How does that work? That was a brainchild of Gunnar Hansen. Mm-mm. Really? Yes. Um, we had done Wolfsbane with Gunner, and we were driving uh, up to Gatlinburg because he was going to do a, um, a guest appearance at the Ripley's Haunted House up there. Yeah, yeah. Along the way, he was got to talking about the Tattoo Festival and, you know, the Horror Festival and everything, and we were just like, Hey, wouldn't it be cool if we could take a tattoo festival and blend it to a horror festival? So and cool. he was like, you know, we'll call Kane, we'll call Bill Mosley, we'll call Sid Haig, we'll call Doug Bradley, Michael Berryman. Um, and that is how it, you know, the full moon had ran as a, just a tattoo show for mm-hmm. three years. And then it became the Tattoo and Horror Festival, which was the very first full-on tattoo and horror festival to ever be done. Oh, wow. I, I love it, man. And I yeah. cannot even imagine the amazing horror tattoos that happen or are on people. I love tattoos. My wife has a ton of them. I have a couple, but it's like, I love looking at tattoos and especially you combine horror. I'm yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. So yeah, that's that's how that's how and it you know, Gunner, God God rest his soul. I mean, he yeah, was yeah, really, yeah. really a really really you know, so you gotta take the chainsaw massacre. I mean, I think there were so many people that was influenced, you know, in our generation yeah. by that film. And, oh yeah. Uh, you know, it it just it, it still lives on 
to this day. It, I, I tell you, it's it, it it was the movie that that and Exorcist were the two movies that no matter yep. what, if I saw even a picture in a magazine, I my heart would race. I would start sweating. Like I would get so scared. And with uh, with Texas, it was the psychological horror at the very end with her yeah. at the yep. table. Like I, I, I very easily put myself in a main character's position very easily. I think I have a, a very overactive imagination as an improviser. And man, I mean, I the first time I saw that, I, I like I think I was 14 or 15 and I couldn't shake it for days. Yeah. Like I couldn't yeah. shake it. Like, like you said with an exercise, same just, way. Gunner just had a way <laughs> like yeah no yeah. one else like just the dance moves <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah everything man just there's something Wait. same thing with kane kane ain't nobody plays no jason like kane, kane is jason <laughs> we, we, me and him were having this conversation the yep. other day kane is jason absolutely. absolutely i mean there's just a way certain actors that you know that have had well, multiple the way that they they move i mm -hmm. mean the way they they just embody that character and you know, I mean, uh, it, it Kane definitely does it. Um, Gunner, it was funny when we were filming Shutter with with Gunner, and we actually had Ed Neal and uh, John Dugan, all three. That was That's awesome. Oh yeah, we know John. Had, yeah, yeah. Had had been in a film together since Chainsaw, and Stacy and I were driving Gunner back to the hotel after shooting a long night, and he's up front and he leans over to me and he says so Ben are you convinced now that I am a brilliant actor <laughs> 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 yes yeah know. yes you he are. was he, I mean so, gosh absolutely uh, it, it was fun we had a good time uh, shooting that and uh, so that you know that that being able to do these films with these guys and ladies that we kind of grew up yeah. watching, yeah, yeah, these films, and then being able to work with them on a film, that's been, you know, a really. Mm. I, I can't. I mean, you know, we the closest we get is here on our show, um, yeah. but even that, and so to be in the proximity you get to be in, I mean, God, I envy you. But uh, it's it's yeah. fantastic. It's so cool. I, I absolutely love and how willing and just open and so cool. You, you know, you. You idolize people, especially, you know, us who idolize horror actors and stuff like that. We idolize them and we forget their people too, you know, and then mm -hmm. you find out, yeah, you know, yeah. like Michael Berryman there, you, you know, he's, we, we, when we had him on his cat, Kiki had just passed away like 20 yeah, years. So he's yeah, drinking a beer yeah. talking to us about the life of Kiki, you know? We're yeah. Like, we're like, but you're yeah. scary, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and Kane is a is a very I mean he he is a really really nice guy. Oh I mean, yeah, they, he is a very sincere. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, it's almost like most know. of the horror actors are the sweetest little butterflies, and your standard actors are giant oh douchebags. Douche yeah, <laughs> yeah. So and she's back. She is. Right. I'm back, bitchy. Yeah, she's back <laughs> from out <my> space. <laughs> um, but yeah. <laughs> it, I'm excited, man. I really, I really hope this takes off for you guys this year. Man. Yeah. I'm just, I'm looking over here, looking at the lineup and I'm just excited, not just for all the great actors and artists and all that stuff, but looking at the list of tattoo artists. I mean, it's just like, this is going to be so much fun. And, you know, for our listeners that live in Louisville, which a majority of them are, you know, it's not very far. <laughs> no, no. I might, I might have to wander over there. Yeah, I mean, I used to go down to Nashville for this comic festival um, once a year and different things like that. It's not well. I mean, I grew, I went to school at Western Kentucky University in Bowling Green, so we were always in Nashville. So, <laughs> but yeah, you guys, this is exciting. I mean, just everything. I, I cannot believe how incredibly awesome and massive this looks. Um, with where we are. I'm so excited for people to be able to get to go to this. 
Um, all of this stuff, man, it's just Full Moon Inc. is just, again, I know we said this at the very beginning, but good God, this conglomerate is impressive, you guys. Yeah, yeah like, you've really built an empire. You know, we're trying to, uh, you know, I've run an improv festival and we ran an improv school and then we've got our podcast network and our different shows, but I'm like, this is who I want to be as you guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're who I'm striving to be. Well, yeah. Especially you, Stacey. I want to be you. Yeah. Thanks, man. You're welcome. You're welcome. Back. Thank I'll be you. you. I'll be you, Ben. I'm not making well, yes. you like our hair is kind of similar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't I, I don't I don't I, I don't know. I think I think mine may look a little bit like Stacy's. I'm a blonde. So. <laughs> um so they can uh, find all this info at fullmooninc.net, correct? Is there anywhere else uh that yeah, you can and, to go? Uh, full moon tattoo and horror festival dot com mm -hmm. is you know kind of another main site. Um and then we're doing our ticket sales um, off of Haunt Pay. Uh, that works so well. Stacy's got that set up with the uh, Haunted House, and we just use, like their platform. So if you go to hauntpay.com and then just search Nashville Full Moon, you'll you'll find it. Perfect, man. Yeah. All we're, right. We're excited. And we'll be sharing that out. Um, not just, uh, you know, in the um, byline for this episode, which people will be able to click from it straight there. So if you're listening, check where you found this and click that link right there. Mm -hmm. um, but also the, you know, the week of and week four stuff, we'll try to push that for you guys too. Cause uh, well, boy, I'll tell you what, this is exciting. Uh, I'm just so excited for cons to start back up. Oh uh, Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. Now that I'm living out in the West Coast, I'm like, I got other stuff that I've never been to. I'm excited. So, yeah. right. <laughs> so any, before we get going, um, I always want to ask uh, what what is your favorite, not even favorite, but what is the horror anything that you stand by more than anything that kind of defines why you are into horror and the things that you're into. So for each of you, what, what is your, your, I guess, if you had to tattoo one horror thing, you know, what would it be? Special effects makeup. Oh, cool. Yeah. 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 You know, it's funny because I got into, you know, the movie horror part through special effects makeup as well. But I, I think that kind of led me into the filmmaking part. Mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. And I guess mine would be the root of, of just film and movies. Um, that, that I think is, you know, going back as a kid, that that's what drew me into the world of horror. Um, so I think, I think mine would be the filmmaking part of it. all. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. You it's know, crazy. Uh, Stacy would... definitely. I mean, I'm a I'm a good makeup effects artist, but Stacy is a badass. And, <laughs> you know, she's. I love it. Her painting skills awesome. just blow me away. When we when she gets back there in the hall and she's detailing, it's it's just. It's, it's, I, it's, it's, I, I it's have a, like a little Frankenstein, you know. Yeah, imagine. I have a big <laughs> love for special effects makeup stuff. I did, um, dinner detective, or not dinner detective, but pretend patient where we would go, um, you know, we'd pretend to be like out in the field. So they had to do this special makeup on us and stuff like that for like, um, EMTs or even the military and things like that. Forget the name I, of it right now, but I that, we were talking about yeah. That, but it yeah, my, my, my friend Santosh, he also does some of that. But how, how I got okay with horror films was because my, my brother's best friend, he had a sister that was like 15, 20 years older than him. And she did special effects makeup on a ton of horror movies in the 80s. She did like Day of the Dead. She did like two of the, like the Freddy movies. Like, I mean, she wasn't, she was just, you know, one of the, you know, grouping there. She wasn't like any of the main people or anything, but when she would come to visit, she would sit me down and watch some of these movies with me. And she would tell me exactly how everything was made, what it was. Wow. And it helped me stop being scared and become fascinated by it all. Listen, and so, I mean, yeah. It broke it yeah. down for you. Yeah. And so now when I see CGI blood, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's so I love special effects because, you know, early on when I was a kid, I got taught 
especially watching like Day of the Dead and Dawn of the Dead. She was like, oh, so Tom did this here, you know, like, cause she worked with him and um, stuff like that. So very, very cool. So, but thank you guys so much. Yes, for, thank you. And uh, in your, your evening with us, we really, really appreciate it. And coming out Great to job. the dilapidated mansion. Yep. Um, <laughs> Our humble abode. Hey, we like it dilapidated. Sadie, what are you talking about? We're crazy. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> we, monsters. Got a, we got a puppy pile with all the dead bodies just to stay warm. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but again, everybody, Ben and Stacy Dixon, you guys yes. to fullmooninc.net or you said full moon tattoo and horror festival.com. Yep. And full moon cineplex.com for oh. the movie theater. For sure, yeah. Next time I get to Nashville, I will be hitting you guys up because I want to go to all of this. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I live, I, I, I live in Kentucky, so uh, you know, if you ever feel oh, like you need, you know, the haunt's going to be open for the convention as well. Ooh, that's Ooh. really that's a great idea. One night only, Saturday night, <laughs> <laughs> April third. Okay, WrestleMania. <laughs> Come and get it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> One night of madness. The slaughterhouse. The slaughterhouse. Get your mimosas in the morning after you're dead. <laughs> yeah. Which will be Easter, so you Which can... Will... Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Easter. Yeah, I'm going to uh, Jerome, Arizona here. It's like it's supposed to be like one of the most haunted towns in America. I'm going there uh, Saturday night of Easter, so that'll be fun. <laughs> That's what Jesus would want you to do. That's what I told my brother. I was like, well, it's Resurrection Zombie Weekend anyway, so some cool oh, shit geez. should probably happen. <laughs> oh, and on that note... <laughs> Seriously, though, thank you guys so much. Yes, um, thank you like so said, much. <laughs> well, cool. Well, thank y'all so oh, much. Thank for you having. all. And with that, dear friends, we come to the end of another delightfully disturbing episode of Misters of the Dark. As always, thank you for listening. Thank you to the Fearscape Media Network. And thank you to Corey Adams and Ashley Jones Adams from Nothing Wrong for our delightful musical theme. Stefan, I can't find Menard. Oh no, oh no, oh God, no. Oh, there's no telling what kind of mess that little idiot could get into, Lance. Will you stop your bitch, you can just help me find him. Fine, okay. Menard! Menard! Where are you, buddy? Uh, we want to see the taco dance. That cheese, come on, buddy, spread that cheese. <laughs> Don't worry, Bernard. We're coming for you. We're co we got you. Oh my God, dude! I'm so sorry. I was just looking through the, the, the toilet when I saw this large upside down neck. Fine, it's attached to this large piece of. I'm so sorry. I just thought I'd try it. I'm so sorry. I'm so well, sorry. well, <laughs> won't you look at that? I guess our little problem is just kind of a. <laughs> Ooh, sorted itself out. <laughs> yeah, but Stefan, it looks like he's been hanging there for quite some time. Don't you think he should be completely dead by now? Eh, we've seen stranger occurrences. Well, should we just grab our daggers and finish the job? Hmm? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. I'm rather interested to see how long he'll keep going. Oh, I've never went this long without oxygen to my brain before, but I, I don't want to be a bother. I just, you know, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, then. All right, before we go, dear friends, I'll leave you with this. Life is full of questions, and idiots are full of answers. Good night. Look at his feet dangle. <laughs>